Chapter 14. The Dead Man. That's it, Mr. Utterson, exclaimed Poole. Just what I'd hoped you'd say. I'll see to it, Poole, that I bear full responsibility for this action. What have you got around here that we can use on the door? There's an axe in the laboratory, sir. We use it to open crates, and here's a heavy poker for you. Poole selected one of the fireplace tools and handed it to the lawyer. Mr. Utterson felt its weight. A good piece of iron, he observed. I hope I will not need such protection, but I think we both know more than what we've said. Yes, sir, that's the way of it. Then let us make a clean breast of the matter. You recognize that figure even though he had his face covered. Poole did not hesitate. I admit it moved quickly out of my view and was so doubled up that another man might not recognize him. But I know that it was Mr. Hyde. We never got back his key to the laboratory door. Besides, did you ever meet Mr. Hyde, sir? Yes, said the lawyer, once. Then you know as how there's something very queer about him. It gives you a scare just to say him. I admit I felt something like that. Well, sir, when this monkey-like creature jumped and ran in off into the office, a feeling like ice went down my spine. That's what makes me sure it was Mr. Hyde. It's as I feared all along. Poor Henry has been murdered for his money. Addison looked at the servants, still huddled on the other side of the hall, pointed at one and said to Poole, Call that man over. A big footman answered Poole's summons. In spite of his large size, he was pale and nervous, but he listened intelligently to Mr. Edison's instructions. He was to arm himself and one of the bigger kitchen boys with heavy pokers. They were to stand in the street and guard the scarred door in case the thing tried to escape that way, or was able to overpower both Poole and Utterson. I will give you ten minutes to arm yourselves and take up your post, said the lawyer. After the servants left, Utterson motioned Poole to follow him. They crept to the lavatory, where Poole located an axe. Consulting his watch, Mr. Utterson signaled that it was not yet time. It was not yet ten minutes. They could hear footsteps inside the office, going back and forth. Back and forth. That's the way it walks all day, sir, whispered Poole, and sometimes all at night. Stops only when a few chemist sample is discovered, and then just for a short time. Tell me, sir, do they sound at all like the doctor's footsteps? The steps fell lightly and oddly, with a certain swing, though they went slowly. They are much different from the heavy tread of Henry Jekyll. Utterson shook his head and said, No, they do not. Once, said Poole, I heard it weeping. Weeping, said Utterson with a sudden chill of horror. True, sir, it was enough to make me want to join in, like a lost soul it was. The ten minutes allowed the footman and the kitchen boy were up. Poole set the candle on a nearby table, and he and Utterson mounted the stairs. The footsteps in the office still sounded in the silence. But at Utterson's words, they came to an abrupt halt. Jekyll, cried Utterson in a loud voice, I demand to see you. There was only silence. I warn you, continued the lawyer, our suspicions are aroused. I intend to see you, even if we have to break down the door so I can do so. Utterson, cried the voice from within, for God's sake have mercy. That's not Jekyll's voice, said the lawyer. It's Hyde's. Down with the door, Poole. He stepped back so Poole would have room in which to swing the axe. The first blow shook the whole laboratory, but only splintered the wood beside the lock. A dismal screech rang out from the office. It was like an animal's terror. Up went the axe again, and down. One of the panels opened, but the door, like everything in Henry Jekyll's house, was strongly built. So it was not until the fifth blow that the lock finally burst and the wrecked door fell inward. A moment of quiet followed the loud blows and the crash of the door. Mr. Utterson peered into the office and saw a good fire going, and the kettle on for tea. On a table, a delicate porcelain teapot waited for the kettle. On another table, papers were neatly stacked with a few bottles of chemicals in a row. Only one was out of line. Mr. Utterson slowly made his way into this quiet, comfortable room, and looked around carefully. Behind a large chair, he spotted a foot. It belonged to a man lying face down on the floor. Utterson reached down and turned the figure over. Poole, right behind the lawyer, drew in his breath. I was right, he cried. It's Mr. Hyde. Yes, said Mr. Utterson. And he is dead, 